Hi, Andy Brocklehurst here, and we're going to start with an overview of software product magic. I'm going to start the software up. It takes a second or two just to load up and do its initialization. Okay. I'm just going to talk you through the basic features and uh, you should already by now have a clue as to what this does because there's some uh, demonstration software that's been built using this. And uh, this is going to show you just how easy it is to put a piece of software together. Now, although this is a very simple system, it is also a massively versatile system. You're not limited to just churning out a file which uh, some other software builders limit you to. With this, you can put out multiple files and it can make modifications to some or all of them. You can work with a file, which they never see as a file, uh, but gets loaded up in the internal HTML viewer uh, at the end, which is an optional feature. So let's just talk through the uh, easy parts of this. And uh, then in the next video, we'll actually do a demonstration of putting something together with it uh, properly. Software title is exactly what it says. It's whatever you want to call your piece of software. And your name in there normally, which will be it, whoever's created it. Short description, uh, which appears on a welcome splash screen, optionally, if you want it to. Uh, so this normally just tells them what the software does. Uh, so let's you do X, Y, and Z. And about box URL, this will normally be a link to your website. So you know wherever you're selling your software products from, and a bit of text that will appear on a link. That will go in the uh, About box, so when they click Help About in the program that they build with this, there will be a box that says, there will be a little thing that says Visit Us, and if they click on it, it'll take them to the website. We'll turn that on so that it shows the splash screen when the software starts up. Now you have to select a template folder, and this is the folder that has the working files in it, uh, files that have got what we call tags in them, and it's going to scan those tags and that's how it's going to build the software. Now, in in a video in a, in a moment, I'll show you how to build a countdown generator. But for the moment, let's just load up this folder in uh, just a normal browser window. Now, I've already prepared these files, but here we have three files. And the program, the countdown program, will need to make changes to that one and that one. Uh, but this isn't a problem for software product magic. It can edit whichever files it needs to. It doesn't need to do anything with that one. But we just give it a folder, so we tell it where these files are. So in this case, I've just got them on my desktop. There we go. This tells it the extensions of the files that it needs to make changes to. So let's see, we've got text, HTML, HTML, PHP, CSS listed as default. I know that in that uh, folder there was a .js file, which is a JavaScript file, so I need to add that. This is just a comma-separated list. And, you know, in this case, there aren't any PHP files, so I could take that out. But you don't have to. If, if there's a file type in here that doesn't exist in the folder, it'll just ignore it. Uh, so I've added JS to there for the JavaScript file. Optionally, you can give a URL to a help file. Uh, which would be on your website. If you do that, then when they click on the help menu in their software, there will be an extra link which will go to that URL and it'll just say help and then click on it and go to your site. Okay, now we're into the section where we look for the tags. Now, I haven't explained tags yet, but basically I have been through the files in that folder and I have substituted certain pieces of information for what we call a tag. And those tags are going to be the things that the software fills in later on. So when I click scan, this will scan the entire folder and will find all of the tags in any of the files that meet the search criteria. So the search criteria being text files, HTML files, so on. So it's found those 
and I'm just I'm not going to worry but you can if you need to change the order of any of these you can do uh, this will change the order in which the software asks questions so if I wanted to ask what their name was last then I could pop that on the bottom and then we click next and we're into setting up filling out those tags now Basically, for each type of each tag, you can either ask them a question, which can be a single text line entry. You can give them a multi-line text box. So if you want them to paste like an article or something in, you can give them a, a larger box. The difference between those boxes is this. Here is a single line box, the question one here. The explanation box that we've got here is a multi-line. You can have several lines and so on. You can have a list of answers, which will pop up like, like this is a list box here where you've got a scroll list of, of options. So if you had a question like, uh, if, if we imagine we weren't asking what the date was, but we were asking them uh, what sex they are, male or female, then you could do a list do of answers, male, comma, female. And those would be the choices. And when they run this, when you generate your software, you'll get a box like this but with the two entries that you've put in there. Uh, we've also got a file selector, which uh, if you've seen the software I made using this for building mini niche sites, you'll know that that asks for a graphical header, which it put in all the files. And that allows you to give the user an opportunity to choose a file. Uh, we've also got system value, which is for assigning, if you had a value like time or date, you could put into it directly. Uh, the time or the date from if you want it to be today's date uh, and these are all of the standard variables or standard uh, things that you've got access to that the system already knows and we've also got equations and conditional equations which I'm not going to touch on here uh, we'll, they're sort of a more advanced feature to be honest you can build very good software using just the first two options on this list which are by far the easiest um, basically you're going to fill these out and when you're finished and go to the finish screen and this won't let me build it because I've left all these blank obviously and here are the options that you can set for your software so you can choose uh, do you want the user to choose the output folder where the files are going to be created so if you were doing something like a site builder you would want them to be able to choose where the files got made if you were doing something where really they like to generate the files just occasionally in there for their own use, you might just want to automatically assume that it's going to go in the documents folder uh, in a subfolder called whatever you've named your program. You can also create the folder files in the Windows temporary folder and this is really useful. Uh, like one of the example uh, pieces which we'll also be looking at in a separate tutorial is building a calorie calculator piece of software which asks for information and then gives them results about their BMI and things like that. Now those results just need to be displayed on screen with an option to print them out. They, they don't want an HTML or a text file created on their computer. So in that case I create the files in the temporary folder and then tell it to open the file that it creates at the end you can say display a file and put the file name in here let's say on the countdown generator we would want to ask them where we want to create the fold the files it would also be good to automatically open that folder once the files are created for them so that they've got them there ready to upload to their web space uh, then we choose a folder where we want to create our software and that's where, we'll create, where we, we would create it the program name that you want to give it so uh, if, if we were really doing a countdown generator then we could say countdown generator.exe uh, save load feature basically do you want them to be able to save the settings they put in now on a countdown generator you're going to ask them three or four questions it's no hardship you don't there's no point in saving that if they you know did it wrong they just redo it 
in something like the site builder software I made, there were over 60 things that I had to ask them because it had to ask them site names, keywords, I had to ask for 10 article titles, 10 article pieces of body content and so on. Now somebody, firstly, might get interrupted while using the software, need to come back to it. And this will, if you turn this on, it will give them an option on their menu, like you've got here, to save and load. Okay, in this one we don't need a save feature anyway. Uh, background image will be the image that goes behind your piece of software. I've got uh, an image here of a countdown timer, which I would use. Uh, and then finally, what button, what you want the finish button to say when they've answered all the questions. So by default, it's finished, but you could say um, make countdown like that. And that's how the button will be labeled. Uh, then there's some options for whether you want to build uh, like a demo version. I'll talk about that separately later on, but you can set time trial versions up. Uh, whether they need a registration code to activate the software, and if so, where they go to get that. Ideally, if you're trying to build a list or you want them to do a CPA offer. And if you've got the pro version, you'll also have the option to build a branding tool so that you can build software that you sell with private label rights and give them the option to brand. And you can choose, if you do build a brander, whether you let them change certain things. If I had filled this all out correctly, which I haven't, when you click build, it would then make this software ready to run. So that's just an overview of some of the features uh, that this has got. And um, let's uh, show you very quickly if i had done the countdown generator properly and i will do this in a in another video let's show you what that would have looked like when it was finished okay this is a countdown generator that i've already built uh, i've added a couple of extra things into it that uh, you didn't see in the standard tags list but this is what you would get if i run this so countdown generator, that's the splash screen at the beginning with the description in it. Uh, they can choose now to turn that off so it doesn't show every time they start it. That's the graphic I dropped in the background. And in this one, I asked the name first. And there's the help down the bottom telling you what they've got to put in. Uh, it asked the, for the date in month, date, year format. And you'll notice that it defaults to today's date. Uh, I haven't told you how to do defaults yet, but uh, I will show you that in a later video. And the time that you want it to go off. Uh, so let's just let's just change this. So let's say we're going to do it in a year's time at 12.01 in the morning. And then the web address you want to go to when it's time to redirect. And so this piece of software would normally be used if you were doing like a short term offer. You could have uh, the, the main web page with the countdown. If they order from that page before the countdown runs out, they get a special price. If they don't, it would redirect them to this. That would be your full selling price sales page. Uh, uh, or you could do a, a countdown to a launch and it would say coming soon with the timer. When the timer hits zero, it would redirect to your launch page. If I hit finish, it's going to ask me where I want to save this. Just going to drop it in testing folder for now and there we go it's built the software and I set this to display the index file uh, which has put my name in there Oops, sorry. there and um, you can see the countdown actually working uh, I could have just displayed a readme or whatever else I wanted to do there and it also you'll see has popped up this window which is all of the files that it has built for this and it's filled in all the blanks and so on. So that would be ready for me to upload to a site. So it gives you an idea of something that you can build with this. And uh, if you look through the tutorial videos, I'm gonna actually do how I built this countdown generator in full, including how I filled out those default values uh, and talk about some of the advanced features. But that is an overview of software product magic, the easiest way to rapidly create software that you can sell for profit.